when it comes to laundering money, you know, a lot of U.S. officials believe that the Mexican drug cartels are actually teaming up with China in order to launder money. Well, allegedly, you know, the um, all the fentanyl is coming from China. Yeah, well, the I ingredients heard that. to make the fentanyl is come from China to Mexico, and they're processing it and bringing it into the United States. Yeah, and China is not very friendly with the United States, so they're yeah. willing to, you know, do whatever. Did you ever ever have any dealings uh, with China or the Chinese? No. Okay. You were working with the Russian mob. Yep. Which uh, takes me to uh, a person that I researched uh, before our interview, which I don't think I ever mentioned before. Anthony Castle, a.k.a. Gas pipe. Gas pipe. Gas pipe. Yes. You know him well. Fairly well. Yeah. Fairly well. Knew him. He's dead. But yes. I knew him fairly well. Gas pipe was the underboss of the Lucchese crime family. Yes. He was also regarded as a homicidal maniac in the mafia. Okay. Uh, suspected of committing dozens of murders. And he confessed his involvement in 15 to 36 murders. Okay. Did you know about this when you were dealing with him? Yeah. So he was known as a murderer. Yeah. Okay. So, according to the reports, you worked with him. Okay, so let me try to figure out this story, right? So he had a close alliance with the Russian mob. Marat. Balagola. Balagola. You know Balagola? Yeah. Okay. So, tell me about Balagola. Well, he was, uh, he was in the gas business, you know. Uh, was he a competitor of mine? There was enough to go around. I wouldn't say that. I mean, there was times when we sold him gas and we exchanged. He might have sold us some. We sold him some. Uh, but, you know, he was with Gas Pipe, as far as I know. He had a relationship with him. Um, but again, we were two separate entities. I had different Russians with me. Okay. Because I read something interesting, um, and this is on Wikipedia. Said uh, after Colombo Capo, Michael Frenzies began shaking down his crew. Balagola approached Christopher Fernari. Christy Consiglier. Tick. What's that? Christy Tick, they call him. Yeah. Right. Uh, Consigliere, Consigliere of the Lucchese crime family and asked for a sit down in Brooklyn. And he said, there's enough to go around. Everyone could be happy. So what's this whole shakedown that, you're ta- that they mentioned? It wasn't really a shakedown. You know, before Balagula aligned himself with anybody, um, you know, we were trying to get him to come into our deal, basically. And if what I remember, he didn't like my partner, Iris, they didn't get along, so he didn't want to do that. And uh, I think he ran to Gas Pipe. I'm, I'm not exactly, he ran to Gas Pipe for protection or for help. And then we ended up with Christy Tick in a sit down, who I got along with very well. He and I were, were friends. And uh, we worked it out where Balagula was their guy, and that was it. And I said, okay. So Balagula, is he still alive? I think he's dead. Oh, let me yeah. look him up. Uh, sure. Yes, he died in 2019 yeah. at age 76. Right. What was different about the Russian mob than the Italian mob? Because you don't see a lot of the, you know, the Italian guys seem like they, they do interviews and there's movies about them, and it's almost, you know, adopted in popular media. The Russian mob seems a bit more secretive. I've never seen any Russian, you know, Russian mob yeah. interviews and so forth. People always give me a hard time. How come you don't interview Russian gangsters? I'm like, they don't talk. Yeah, they don't come out. Yeah, you know, th- they were different in that they didn't they didn't have a real structure. It just seemed that somebody assumed the lead. The guy that was making the money and it's, he assumed the lead, and he had his guys around him. That's how it was with the three Russians that I was involved in, and they are they're very quiet. I mean, one of my partners, uh, you know, David Bogatin, you know, if the guy says 10 words when you're sitting with him for an hour, it's a lot. You know, he was just very quiet, very secretive. Great partners, by the way. Great partners. I made a ton of money with them, you know, over a seven, eight year period. They were stand up. Great partners. Um, and, you know, but they are. They're quiet. They don't believe in the press. They, they do it right, quite honestly. You know, they're there to make money. They're not there to put on a show. Well, I mean, according to this report, the, the street tax from uh, Balagul's organization, it was not only strategically shared, but also became, you know, the five families' biggest moneymaker after drug trafficking. Gas. Gas. Oh, no doubt. Yeah. I mean, I was bringing my guy $2 million a week. Sheesh. No doubt. I mean, it, it was the biggest, well, not 
not drugs, because there's such a fallacy out there with drugs, but it was the biggest operation since Prohibition, no doubt. Okay. 